Welcome back. Today, video two of five on setting up and maintaining a saltwater aquarium, the cycle. Bacteria, RDIs, saltwater, light, and circulation are today's topics. If you missed video one, the link's in the description below, and let's jump right in with filtered water. We can't use tap water in our saltwater tanks. There's just too many unknowns. Chlorines are bad for our pets, heavy metals can build up in the tissues of corals, and nitrates and phosphates can fuel nuisance algae growth. So we need to use filtered water. For starting out, the easiest way is to go to your local grocery store and pick up filtered water. Whatever the cheapest store brand is will work fine. Just check the label to be sure it's either distilled or RO water and you want them without added minerals. You can also fill up those big five gallon blue plastic jugs because that's just RO water as well. While buying filtered water from the grocery store is the easiest and most convenient way to get your salt water tank set up, over time it will also be time consuming and pretty expensive. You will eventually want to purchase and set up either an RO, but preferably an RODI filter. But that's a topic for another video as we don't need it right now to set up our system. You'll need around 13 gallons to initially fill your aquarium, then two gallons a week for a weekly water change, which we'll talk about in video five, and an additional gallon a week to replace water loss due to evaporation. So for now, just go to your grocery store and pick up 15 gallons of filtered water. Unless you wanna be super gung-ho, then feel free to set up an RODI filter. It's time to make our first batch of salt water and you're gonna need a few things to do this. A clean, five five gallon bucket that's never had any sort of chemicals in it, something to stir with, the bag of salt, and the refractometer with calibration fluid. A refractometer is a device we use to measure the salinity level of our seawater, so let's get that calibrated first. To do this, shake the bottle of calibration fluid and then place five drops on the surface of the refractometer's prism. Place the cover on top and give it a couple taps. Hold it up to the light, look through the eyepiece, and take a reading. If it reads 35 parts per thousand, it's already calibrated and you're done. If it's not at 35 parts per thousand, remove the small rubber cap, take the included small screwdriver, and make small adjustments until the refractometer reads 35 parts per thousand. Then replace the cap, Rinse the prism in tap water and dry it with a soft towel. Now we're ready to make the salt water, so grab that five gallon bucket and fill it four fifths of the way to the top with the filtered water. While stirring, slowly add in approximately two and a half cups of salt and stir for 10 minutes until it's completely dissolved. Use the refractometer to test the salinity of your water and either add more salt or filtered water as needed until you reach 35 parts per thousand. Temperature does matter for an accurate salinity reading, so if your water was stored in a cold location, after adding those five drops to the prism of the refractometer, wait about 45 seconds for that water to warm up before attempting to read the results. Now we're gonna add the salt water to the aquarium and make another couple batches until the tank and rear filtration chambers are both full. Our goal is to not overly stir up the sand bed during this process. So either pour the water directly into the rear filtration chamber or pour it directly over the rock work so it disperses out a lot more. Make enough salt water until both the main tank is full and every rear chamber is full to within a couple inches of the top. Now that the tank and rear filtration chambers are both full, plug in the return pump. We wanna make sure that the water level in the right rear filtration chamber is just above the level of the glass baffle. So add salt water or remove salt water until it gets to that level. Let's install the stick on thermometer next. I put mine on the bottom rear left panel near the back of the tank. So it's both easy to read, but unobtrusive and out of sight. Now let's plug in the heater, double check to make sure the water level in the rear central chamber is high enough to be above the minimum water height for the heater. We're gonna give the tank two to three hours to heat up and then come back and check to make sure it's at 77 to 78 degrees. If it is, your heater's already calibrated and you don't need to do anything. But if it's not, 
unplug the heater and remove it from the tank. Adjust the calibration dial in whichever direction is needed until the temperature points to the correct tank temperature. Then simply change the temperature of the thermometer back to 77 to 78 degrees, replace it in the tank, check back in an hour or so to make sure everything's good and your heater is calibrated. The nitrogen cycle is a process by which atmospheric nitrogen is converted into various organic compounds such as ammonia and nitrite before returning back into its gaseous state in the atmosphere. This matters greatly for our aquatic pets because when we add food to our aquarium, the organic nitrogen inside that food will break down into ammonia and nitrite, which is actually quite toxic for our animals. But there are actually these microscopic beneficial bacteria that consume the ammonia and turn it into nitrite, and then these other bacteria that consume that nitrite and turn it into nitrate, making things much safer for our pets. If you were to add some food to the tank, let's say a piece of frozen shrimp, those beneficial bacteria would naturally colonize the sand bed and rock work, but that process could take over two two months, which is a long time to wait to add fish. So instead, we speed up that process by adding food and a bottle of beneficial bacteria to our tank, reducing that two month wait down to eight days. First, let's start by removing the filter sock. We want the beneficial bacteria to colonize all over the sand and rock work, not on the filter sock. Now add a large pinch of pellet food. Lastly, pour in the entire bottle of Dr. Tim's one and only live nitrifying bacteria. Now we have to wait for eight days, but during those eight days, we have a few other things to do. If you're interested in learning exactly when the nitrogen cycle is complete within your tank, you'll need to pick up an ammonia and nitrite test kit. Then test every other day for both. First, you will see the ammonia go up and spike and then start to come back down. Then you'll see the nitrite go up and spike and then start to come back down. Once the ammonia and nitrite have both spiked and come back down to zero, you'll know the nitrogen cycle is officially complete in your tank and it's ready for animals. While we wait for our tank to finish cycling, let's add our lights and finish setting up our flow. Our goal with adding a wave maker is twofold. First, we want to eliminate dead spots in our tank where fish food and waste will collect. And second, we want to create some turbulent flow in our tank, which is really important for healthy and thriving corals and anemones. Because we already have flow from our return pump, I'd recommend placing the wave maker on the left panel near the filtration chamber overflow. This will add some flow to the rear of the tank. Just don't put it too close to the surface or the wave maker will suck in a whole bunch of air bubbles. It's finally time to add some light to our tank, but light is so much more than just for aesthetics. Corals and anemones are photosynthetic animals and they derive the vast majority of their nutrition from the sun. But they can't utilize just any old light. Only certain wavelengths of light, especially toward the blue end of the spectrum, are suitable for the kinds of photosynthetic zooxanthellae that live within coral and anemone tissue. On top of that spectrum consideration, light intensity is equally as important. PAR, or photosynthetic active radiation, is how we measure the intensity of light. Our eyes can't do this, so we have to use a special piece of equipment called a PAR meter. But there's not just one preferred level of PAR. Each different species of coral and anemone has their own PAR requirements. What's a healthy level of PAR for one species could actually kill another species. So how in the heck is a beginner supposed to navigate this complicated scientific landscape? Well, you have two options. The first is to buy a light specifically made for coral and then borrow or purchase a PAR meter to tune them to the right output level. Or you can buy a well-known light that comes with a preset that matches the kind of corals and anemones you want to put inside your tank. Our setup comes with the AI Blade Grow Light, a powerful and programmable fixture with the right spectrum for coral growth. It's splash resistant, not waterproof, so be careful not to drop it in the tank. Extend the included mounting feet and set the blade light on the rim of the tank. Plug it in, then download the Mobius app, connect the light to the app, 
and choose the Hello Reef preset. This preset is the perfect spectrum, par level, and photo period for anemones and a whole bunch of other large polyps, stony, and soft corals that you might put into the system. But we'll talk about all those animals in video four of this series. You can adjust the start and end time to fit your schedule and maximize viewing pleasure. Just be sure to keep the total time, 10 hours, the same. For example, I work from home, so 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. works really well for me, but if you want to see your tank beautiful in the evening time, then switch that schedule from something like noon to 10 p.m. Now that the tank is set up, water's running through it, it's heated and everything's in full swing, there's a lot of evaporation going on. But we need to replace that evaporation with filtered water, not with salt water. Why? Because salt doesn't evaporate. It stays behind in the tank, only the water evaporates. So every day you'll need to add in enough filtered water so that the water level is just above the baffle in the return pump rear filtration chamber. Because of how water moves through the system, that return pump chamber is the only part of the aquarium that will have a variable water height. At the end of eight days, or if you've chosen to test for ammonia nitrite, once the ammonia nitrite has spiked and returned to zero, the cycle is complete and it's time to add fish to your tank. Click here for that video, video number three in this series, and until next time, be well and happy reefing everybody.